Next on the Broadway show, it's the summer of George on Broadway. Tony winner and TV legend Jason Alexander is here to talk about making his Broadway directorial debut with The Cottage. Plus, thrills and chills in the gray house. We get to know one of the incredible stars of the terrifying new Broadway show. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show. It's a sizzling summer on Broadway with Tony winning shows on stage and new plays and musicals on the way. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Glad you're here. Welcome to The Cottage. It's a hilarious and star-studded new play from director Jason Alexander. I got to know the TV icon who's putting it all together. What made you decide to take this on? <laughs> I loved it. You know, it is a takeoff on the very behaved Noel Coward plays. But you could absolutely see the fun of it and the tropes of it. It has a bunch of silliness, but it also has a lot of stuff that's really about things. It's a bit of a feminist story. It, it's turning a kind of a play that was always dominated by the men and having it dominated by the women and, and sort of traveling through their arc of this circumstance in a different way. Broadway hasn't done a lot of flat out comedies for a while and and I thought that would be just a glorious thing to be part of, to do something that makes people laugh and smile. You've done so much, but does Broadway always give you that, I don't want to use the word tingle, but that like, oh my gosh, it's, it's Broadway. I mean, it just, I feel like this is always something where, I mean, when you come back to it, does it feel new all over again? It is not lost on me that this was where I was hoping my career would end up. And when I was, when I got the notion in any real sense of maybe I'd like to be an actor, my fantasies were not about film and television. They were, I grew up in New Jersey, so I was going, how do I get across that river and work in those theaters? And I reasonably thought it would take quite a long time to get there and then I was lucky enough to start that journey when I was 21 years old. So every time I come back and I get on these stages or I even just get in this area of town and I go, I get to work here. It's not a tiny club, but it's not the biggest club in the world either. When you, when you were inspired by those particular fantasies, it, it just, it, I, I don't really know how to sit with it because it was a fantasy. I, I mean, I just didn't think it was going to happen this way. And as a director, I mean, I've been directing for 30 years, you know, but um, I didn't think I'd get to Broadway. I, I mean, you don't, you get to Broadway by doing, you know, you're the head of an artistic directing company and you push something out and you get it here. Or and you've started when you're much younger and you've built your career to this point, but I'm 63 years old and I'm making my Broadway directorial <laughs> debut, and it's like, what is happening? It, it's, uh, it's not lost on me how extraordinary it is. And you never had the focus uh, to do TV and movies, but that happened. Yeah. When you look back at that and you look at the fact that that character, that, that show, that cast has lived through time, and it really it is a, you know, it's just time, I mean, timeless comedy that you could flip on at any point, on any, in any city, you know, and on, it's probably gonna be airing somewhere. Um, mm -hmm. Thoughts about that? I mean, I'm sure, do you ever stop when, or do you just keep going through the dial? Um, I don't hunt it out. Well, I don't think you, you do either, you know, but. But sure, I've been, you know, especially if I'm on the road doing something and, you're just flipping channels, you don't know what's what, and you go, oh, home movie. <laughs> you know, that's what it always feels like to me, is a home movie we made in the backyard. Well, listen, I can't speak for all of us. I, I don't think any of us had any expectation that the show would have the impact that it seems to have, the staying power that it seems to have. I don't know why young audiences are coming to it at this point. We didn't have cell phones in the show. I mean, it seems like such a creature from another planet at this point. But there's something about it, I don't know what it is, that continues to attract and build an audience. Um, it, it may be that, you know, I do think they were funny, and funny is funny is funny. The way it has played out for me has been a very uh, beautiful thing. I get to see more or less the kindest moments of people who want to share how much they have been touched by or helped by being able to laugh in their lives because of that show. And that's what they want to share. And that is true all around the world. Uh, people have come up and said, you know, you got me through it. 
a tough, a tough day or a tough time. And that, for me in particular, but I think actors in general, suddenly elevates this little kind of selfish thing that we do because we like doing it. Sure. It's, we, we seem to be okay at it and, and it can be rewarding and it suddenly makes it something that has value beyond that and that's a gift to, to us. Yeah, isn't, and that, isn't that what life's all about at the end yeah. of the day, right? Those moments and, and uh, helping each other however we do it. This cast mm -hmm. that has come together for this show is uh, particularly uh, funny and fabulous. How do you feel about uh, this going forward and working with them and what each one brings? Because everybody brings their own, you know, They're, life before this. Bet. I mean, I've got five Broadway veterans and one <laughs> newbie but not new to comedy. I mean, it, it, it's great. They know the theater. They know comedy. They, they, they come bearing gifts and, um, and frankly, insight and points of view. You know, I, I would love to tell you, oh, it's all me and I just, but it isn't. And, and it never is, I don't think, for any um, director. They have brought things to the table. They've asked questions. You know, they, it, it is a true ensemble show. But all shows are to some degree, but the comedy of this, it, it isn't a star vehicle. It all has to work. It's in this very stylized period thing. They all have to nail it. If somebody doesn't get it right, then it kind of looks half-baked. So to have six individual stars mm -hmm. working together as a team for a common cause is always makes me very happy and very feel very lucky. I have every reason to believe that this this show is a real crowd. <laughs> um, okay. But regardless, I'm very happy to say that the, the path of doing it, the people I've met, mm -hmm. the things I've been able to do, it's just been glorious. And hopefully it will all culminate in something everybody says, yay. Want to see more of my interview? Head over to broadway.com for an extended cut. The new horror play Grey House is sending chills down spines at Broadway's Lyceum Theater. It's got jump scares, it's got thrills, and it's got an incredible cast. Paul's here now with a story. That's right, Tamsin. Known by fans for the Quiet Place films, Millicent Simmons is making what she calls a mind-blowing Broadway debut in Grey House. We sat down at the Star Child rooftop at the Civilian. <laughs> Nilsen, so nice to meet you. How is New York and Broadway treating you? Oh my God, I love New York. It's my favorite city in, uh, in the world. I would never say no to, to coming to New York or living here and being on Broadway has been overwhelming. I didn't know what to expect, but I'm loving every moment. It's such a strong community, this theater community, and I feel so welcome. Everyone's so warm and welcoming. It's been a wonderful experience. But you're not necessarily in a warm play. This is kind of like a play. <laughs> no, it's quite the opposite of a warm play. I have to think about this. I, it's not exactly a horror play. It's a psychological thr thriller. It's very nuanced. The audiences are trying to figure out what's happening throughout the th storyline. I think often audiences leave with more questions and answers, and I like that kind of play, that kind of narrative. That's why I said yes to this. What about this cast? I mean, you, you're, you're a fantastic rising star, and I've been watching you for a few years, so it's exciting to see your name on the marquee, but there's a lot of other great names on the marquee as well. Oh my God. I mean, to work with Lori Metcalf, it's amazing. She's so beautiful. And on day one, during rehearsals, she came ready. She had already memorized her lines and we were like all trying to catch up with her. She set the bar right away. And she, you know, she made us kind of look bad on day one, but she's so amazing. She never comes out of char character. Tatiana and Paul and their relationship together in the story is really moving. It's been very inspiring for me. All of the other talent too, the young talent, they're very funny. They're a great ensemble. Were you exposed to any deaf performers who had found careers, you know, on stage or on screen? Were you exposed to them and their work? Not really. There wasn't. I didn't see a lot of representation. My first exposure from a deaf actor was um, Niall on American's Next Top Model. And I watched all of his videotapes, his YouTubes, um, whatever he was in. But I didn't think I would be able to succeed in the industry in Hollywood. I never dreamt I'd be here. I'm very fortunate to be able to be where I am today. And 
It's not only me. You're seeing so much more deaf representation on stage, uh, on stage, in film, in big fi on the big screen, in television. It's, it's just, I feel so fortunate to see this time in history, uh, this change, this social change, where people, where things are more accessible, where we're seeing more diverse representation. What's it been like becoming a movie star? I mean, you were just a girl from Utah who sort of blew up in a big way pretty quickly. Mind-blowing. <laughs> what can I say? Mind-blowing. But I love it. Every moment is just, uh, it, I'm grateful for. I get to meet so many people, so many amazing people. We've traveled over the world m with my family. And to see myself represented on screen, to see sign language on the screen, and also in a horror genre, all the things I love. So I've, I've been meaning to learn American Sign Language. Of course. And it's challenging and, and taking the time to learn it, it, it's very daunting. Since you're here, I'm wondering, maybe you can teach me something? I thought maybe we could teach me and everybody something simple like happy opening night. And it moves up, yeah. That's happy. That's happy, and you did it perfectly. And what do I do with my face? Doesn't matter. Yes, yeah, no. <laughs> Very happy. It's like a box, opening a uh, box. Think of it as opening a box. So much of it is literal. Opening. Okay, opening. Happy, opening. Night. Night. Ready? We're going to put it all <laughs> together. Know. What's happy? Do you remember happy? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> that you. was perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Want to see more of Paul's interview? Head over to Broadway.com for an extended version. Another Broadway Barks is in the books. The 25th annual pet adoption and fundraiser was held in Broadway's Schubert Alley. The star-studded event hosted by Bernadette Peters and Brandy Rainbow. Everybody here probably understands the power of the love of an animal, the connection and how they just add to a family. Plus tons of other big time Broadway stars turned out. Attend the tale of Sweeney Dog. Attend the tale of Sweeney Dog. Of which we've come to the epilogue. Of which we've come to the epilogue. What happens next is up to you, so why not adopt one or better yet two? Like Sweeney. Like Sweeney Dog. Broadway Barks featured adoptable dogs from more than 20 New York City area shelters and rescue agencies. My heart is just exploding from how much love they have been giving us all these years and just supporting the animals and we couldn't do it without them and I love them so much. That's what it means. It's a tremendous honor. I mean, not I mean, to be asked to do anything by Bernadette Peters is a tremendous honor, but to be included in, on such a special anniversary as this, it really means a lot. Broadway Barks was founded by Bernadette Peters and the late, great Mary Tyler Moore back in 1999. The Broadway show is back in just a sec. Hi, my name is Sonia Valsara and I play Princess Jasmine in Disney's Aladdin on Broadway. I love the movie. I grew up watching the movie. Jasmine was like one of my favorite princesses as a kid. And I actually played Jasmine when I was like 11, 12 years old in Aladdin Junior in middle school. That may have been like one of my first lead opportunities as a kid. So <laughs> she's very near and dear to my heart. A big moment in my like artistic journey as a kid was I went to go see Oklahoma at a local high school. And I went home and rented the movie and then like paused and played the movie over and over and over again and wrote a script and then cast my friends at school and we'd have rehearsal at recess and then I like put the show on in my living room. My dad was driving me to AP Bio at like 5.30 in the morning one day and in like classic brown dad fashion was like, you have to decide what you want to do with the rest of your life. Truly, I was like a sophomore in high school and was like, oh, if I had to make a decision right now and not have any regrets, it would be going into theater. Okay, I'm actually like kind of obsessed with gardening, even though I'm not a good gardener. The idea of growing something from the soil is like 
super nurturing and inviting to me and also just because of the climate crisis too, tending to the earth is really important. And I volunteer at like a lot of parks in New York City, like doing that kind of stuff just grounds me and makes me feel more connected to my true purpose. My favorite thing about New York is the people. Yeah, I just don't think there's a place that contains more authenticity, creativity, diversity, and honesty. People are just so honest in this city and I crave it. My first bow in Aladdin was so overwhelming and so beautiful. My whole family was in the audience and I felt so supported by the family I've created here. It totally took my breath away. It's such an honor and it's such a privilege and a joy to play Jasmine every day, to inspire young people who don't necessarily see themselves represented on stage. Jasmine really represents people who look at the world in a different way and are willing to fight for the vision of the world they want to see. I think that's really inspiring for little kids to see and to see someone who is on stage that looks like them and also has compassion and joy and expresses all of these different array of emotions on stage. I think that that is the greatest honor. I mean, it's everyone's like dream to be a princess on Broadway, like <laughs> everyone's dream. And so I am, I'm very grateful, very grateful to be here. Welcome back to the Broadway show. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Let's get back to it. I'm independently owned and liberated, and I think sleeping alone is underrated. The Tony Award winning hit musical Shock is headed across the pond. It's opening in London's West End in 2024. Here's Bess Stevens with another edition of Building Broadway. So this is a brand new musical. People probably don't know what Shucked is about. Can you give us just a, a real quick idea? <laughs> we should be better at this by now, as many people ask what it is, especially with the title. I mean, mm -hmm. we think that the title is a funny pun or uh, just fun to say, but oh my God, how many times do you have to repeat it and repeat it? And then they say, oh, like oysters? And, you're like, and I always do them. I'm like, you know, shucking corn. Well, it's a fable. A farm to fable. It's about a, fic, a you know a fictional town called well a county. It's not even a town. Cobb County, and it is surrounded by a corn wall. And what happens is the corn starts, literally a wall a of corn. A literal wall of corn. No one has left. No one has ever come to the town. But the corn starts to die, and so their way of life is in jeopardy because everything is fueled by the corn. And so they have to make the brave decision to leave. And there's only one person who is, is brave enough to leave, and that's our heroine, Maisie. And she goes to the big city looking for someone who will help fix the corn. She meets a corn doctor who's a, really a podiatrist. It's just a comedy of errors from them. Maybe love is like a seed. A little sun is all it needs. A little rain, a little rain, and so it goes, and so it goes, and it grows and grows and grows and grows from dust. You're known for writing songs that really come from the heart, so tell me how it is to sort of marry your style with this Broadway corny fable. It is ridiculous, and there is a corniness to the idea, but when you get into the heart of it, at the heart of it, are these characters that are colorful and relatable and human amongst this cartoon-like world. And that is what appeals to us. So yeah, it's a musical about corn, but it's about family, it's about community. And there are moments where you're laughing so hard and then moments where most people who have seen it are crying. You laugh till you cry and then you cry till you laugh. And hopefully, you know, everyone will feel that. And I think, I think they will. Friend. My old friend, ins and outs and outs and ins. We've been family all our lives, but we'll be friends, friends forever. You two are very well known for being good friends, getting along. Tell me how you work together. It's special. I, there's nobody I work with like Shane. But I think what we really have going for us is that 
we have a respect for each other where we can say, pardon the pun, the corniest thing ever, and the other one doesn't shoot it down, riffs off of it and turns it into something great. I do get so emotional thinking about what this career, this life would be without her. You know, I can barely look at her when I talk about her, but we're so lucky that we found each other. And that's gonna do it for us. Until next time, I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show.